Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Her Story. Her Story is a very well-known game in the genre of um, puzzle and investigation. I have heard about it before. I have never played it. This is my first time playing it, so um, pardon me if you know the game while I fumble through this. Her Story is released in June 24th, 2015, developed and published by Sam Barlow. A woman is interviewed seven times by the police, search the video database, and explore hundreds of authentic clips to discover her story in this groundbreaking and award-winning narrative game. Um, I'm not sure exactly what to expect. I picked this up because it is labeled as Detective Interactive Fission... Uh, inter not Interactive Fission, thank God. Interactive Fiction and Investigation, because I was looking for investigation games to branch out from hacking simulators, which uh, by and large are generally disappointing. So I'm not sure how this is going to work, but um, it does come highly recommended. So let's give it a shot. Tories. I knew it. They're behind all of this. You are logged in, auth guest, and query. Okay. Is this interactable? It is interactable. Okay. Uh, boy, can I change this? I thought when I entered window mode, I'd be able to resize it. Holy shit, the fucking music throbbing in my ears. Okay, we must first and foremost, before all else, discover where the settings are. Oh my god. Stop. Ah. Ah, it's terrible. Ah. We can't turn the music off? Oh my god. How is this an... Alright, I'm going to turn this down in OBS too, because I don't know what that's going to sound like on a recording, but if it's anything like it was in my ears, it's going to be unbearable. I would also like to change the resolution. Can I please do something? Anti-glare. Oh, that should get rid of the... Mm. Uh, let's... I like the aesthetic, but I can see how that will get annoying and difficult to see but I do like it. I do like it indeed. Uh, let's let's turn the glare off. Okay, that is apparently the extent of what we're able to accomplish with our settings. Log off, read me, really read me, rubbish bin, DB checker, clock, southeast constabulary. Alright, let's do the readmes first. Let's start with this one. Introduction to the Logic Database. Computer technology is the backbone of modern police work. The Logic Database is one of the many continuing efforts to digitize our workflow and preserve evidence in a manner which will allow you to work more efficiently. In the coming years, the computer will continue to be the most valuable item in your crime-fighting toolkit. This database contains footage transferred from the existing homicide and serious crime tape archive at Portsmouth. It has been automatically sorted using our ASR technology. Each statement made by the interview participants is stored separately so they can be tagged for submission to court. The audio has been digitally stenographed and the content of the testimony is attached to each clip. To retrieve a clip, type in a word, e.g. robbery, into the search field, click search, and the database will return all the clips in which the speaker uses that word. To narrow down a search, use multiple words like robbery supermarket. If you are working from a printed transcript, you can be even more precise. Use inverted commas to search for an exact match against the entire statement, e.g. Yes, I was there. E.g. Exempli gratis. Latin for free sample. To store a clip for later reference, click Add to Session. Also, if you wish to add additional tags of your own to help future searches, please click in the User Tags box and type in your desired tags. For any further assistance, please contact your department's Information Technology Representative, Police Information Technology Organization. Now, really read me. Hey, here's the database. 
I filed a Freedom of Information form to get you guest access. Everything seems to work. They transferred the videos off the original tapes in 99, and then the Y2K thing hit, and they got mothballed. No one has touched them since. I couldn't find the server with the detective's footage. Possibly those tapes got damaged when the old archives were flooded in 97, but I figured this would be enough. Take your time, SB. In my rubbish bin, I have hack info. Uh, okay. G-Hack. Mirror game. H-Soft. Cracker. Cyber Ghost. The Legends. You'll, you never see us, Triple X. Illusionist. One for the mums here. Classic two-player strategy for launch time gaming. Enjoy. Is that a devil? Cracks with class. Okay, well there's mirror game there. Player one's turn. I don't, I don't. I've seen this game before. I used to play it um, on the NES, um, but I can't remember how to play it. Also, I can't seem to be doing anything here. That's fine. I'm not interested in remembering how to play this. Cloak. It's five o'clock somewhere, baby. All right, let's begin. It gave us the search term murder, so let's, I guess, start with that. You think it's murder? I mean, clearly it's murder. What can I do to help? Okay. Yeah, that's me. February, and that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? February, Simon. I'm not actually going to be writing any notes down while I play this. I'm just going to I'm just going to do it and see how far we get. I'm not sure if this is the kind of thing I'm even going to be doing for more than a couple of or more than a session. You've got the wrong person. How many? She was interviewed seven times. We have three different outfits so far. This is clearly from the same one. Um, yeah, it appears to be the same day. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. All right, so this one here was June 27th, 94. This one here is July 1st, 94, and July 3rd, 94. Sixty-one entries found. Holy shit! Okay, uh, these take place on. So these are even earlier than those interviews we found before. Simon, Simon Smith. He Simon Smith. Simon Smith. Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Okay. Simon does the more special work: mirror making, feature windows, artistic things, really beautiful things. Simon the Glassmaker at Ernst Glassmakers, or whatever that was. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. If his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo instead of a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. Do I only have the videos or can I get that as well? Uh, I'm going to tag this with um, Simon Info.
It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. Okay, his favorite ring, our favorite bar. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, can you tell, save the princess, that kind of thing. Okay. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? And I only get the first five, so let's go back here and what was the name of the place he worked for? Simon. Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. Ernst Brothers Glass. And it's just the one. Hmm. Yep. Okay. I'm going to try his full name, see if we can return back fewer videos. No, nope, just the one that uses his full name. Okay. Um, what is this? I'm curious about this. One volume is missing. Okay. And this is... Okay, those are the searches. Okay. Um, let's go back to Simon then. Let's grab, I think it was this one. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes. Sounds like a computer there. Amstrad. Just the once. Okay. It's the Rockington Arms. The Rock. It's Rockington Arms. Rock. There we go. So, it was Friday evening. We had an argument. He left. On Saturday, he didn't come back. I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon. They had a job. He didn't show. Mm -hmm. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at The Rock. That's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning. It just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. So she reported him missing. Police interviewed her. She finds out uh, six days later that he's been murdered. So sometime between the 18th and 24th is when they discover the body. Um, so this is all from that interview in the initial report on the 18th. Uh, here we are the day after she finds out he's been murdered. spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. It's difficult to to do this, you know, like uh, watching interrogation videos like this um, can be very useful because you can, you know, gauge apparent uh, truthfulness, right, with things like uh, body language and stuff. Uh, not that I believe that body language analysis is everything that some make it out to be, but it is, um, you know, true that, you know, you, you can at least get a read on a person um, as to whether or not it seems like they're being genuine. And it's difficult in games like this because this video footage obviously is produced for the game and this is an actress here. And it's difficult to tell 
if they are pretending to be deceptive or if it's just their performance. Not that she's not doing a, a great job. I'm just saying that when I watch this, I get a distinct impression that it's inauthentic, but I can't tell if it's the performance or if it's incidental to the performance. Like, for example, watch this. Those frequent dips off to the side with her head and such. Um, they strike me as being very disingenuous, but I, I can't tell if it's supposed to be or if it's just the performance. Again, not that she's not doing a great job. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure that there's very many actors in the entire world that can do a, a truly authentic, deceptive performance. So certainly not denigrating that at all, but I'm just saying it's difficult to tell because uh, it seems like she's lying, but... No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone sang with me from The Rock. So a plumber came in, something from The Rock, okay. Hmm. Oh, excuse me for a moment. All right. I think I might need a... I guess The Rock. You've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. All right, here's a historical calendar. This is 1994. 1990s, 1990s, 1994, okay. And this was June. She reported him missing on Saturday the 18th, so it was the 17th that he went missing. No? Okay, let's just try Friday. This is 27th. I wasn't in the house all of Friday night. After the argument, after Sam left, I left too. I was upset and I wanted to get away. So I took the car. Okay. Let's go back to one of these here. It's the Rockington Arms, the Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with, and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter. Let's see what's up with Helen. Oh, actually, hold on a sec. I think I might have just noticed something. It's the Rockington Arms, the Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with, and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Mm. Seems like she doesn't care for Helen very much. Maybe she suspected something with Simon. No. I think he spoke to Helen. She said he was upset about her argument, but I'm not sure what else he said. He likes Helen. He likes Blondes. Mm. Yes, indeed. No denying that, huh? Okay. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? <laughs> okay. This other person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? The cat flap. Why is she playing a guitar here? You want me to play something? Well, I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay? Probably needs tuning. No. It's okay. How about a traditional ballad? Should be right up your street.
There were two sisters came walking by the sea. Interesting choice of song. She even unlocked a traditional ballad. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, if I what I've what I've pieced together so far is on Friday the seventeenth, Simon and this woman had an argument in a shared flat. He left, presumably to go to the Rock. She left as well, taking the car elsewhere. Parts unknown, which we have yet to discover. Um, it seems to me like she suspected that Helen, the barmaid of the Rock, and Simon may have been carrying on having an affair. Clearly, she harboring some special sort of animosity towards this woman, particularly because she was blonde, and either Simon or gentlemen prefer blondes, one or the other. And so, um, we also have some mention of a wig, a long blonde wig, which she may have procured in some attempt to get Simon's attention, um, but he, of course, not having any of that, may have been the result of the argument. And then also something about a these hairs being stuck in a cat flap. So let's check for wig and see if that's mentioned in the... Oh, it sure is. A wig? You mean... Oh, well, what type of wig? Hmm... You know very well what type of wig it is. No, I've never worn a wig. What kind of wig? Okay. No. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It's like I suddenly didn't exist. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognized me, I started wearing a wig. So she's lying. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers. Drug guys I'd met in clubs, parks, and alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. 
For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. It's hard to how to look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. That was the most fucking bizarre thing. Oh, we just had a something happen, things dimmed and the music changed. That was fucking bizarre. Everything about that was bizarre. It sounds like she and this Hannah, I don't know, are they twins or something? And then they're sharing a house, moving in with Simon and she lives in the attic? What the fuck is that? This was nine I wish that we didn't just have clips. It would be nice to get the whole video here from 7-3 in context. yourself. We screamed at each other, argued, cried, we fought. Or she has hit her back, DID. Left a bruise. No, okay, she's Tore hitting. My wig on from performing, she tore it off. Okay, so you, she was wearing wigs. Eventually, we grew tired of fighting and I left. It's doing it again. The dimming. All right. God. Okay, Let's start here. We've this seen this. Hannah. H -A -N -N -A. Okay, so you are Hannah. It's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work if you mirror it though. It's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Okay. 31 Gladstone Street. Morse code. Oh. Did we just witness a switch? Is that what that was? Polygraph? Yes. My name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Okay. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife okay. was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. <laughs> Amazing what people will admit to on paper. Yeah, it does seem like she has DID. Or that's what we're meant to be mm. led to believe she anyway. She recognized me from the window. She told me to come inside, and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. It was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. Okay.
Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. Yeah, I think I'm getting the idea. Yes. We'd fight. We fought on the beach once, and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under, and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. <coughs> that was it. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. Mm-hmm. A police station. Yeah. When I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd save money pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up in the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off. Mm. Okay. Uh, here's another one from the third. Mm. So, yes. We are being led to believe that this is a dissociative identity disorder. Which, 2015 when this was released, was probably still called multiple personality disorder. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what to do with this information, but... It, uh, so, we, we know a little bit more about her. We still don't know quite what happened to Simon. Um... I'm also wondering if I should just hold off on the rest of this for a part two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that. We don't know quite what became of Simon, but we do have... Uh, it seems to me that the story thus far is that um, this woman, Hannah slash Eve here... Um, I'm going to use her name, Eve, because from what we've learned, it sounds to me like that is the name that was given to her at birth, and Hannah was one that the personality that manifested later had assigned to itself. So Eve here um, has a difficult birth, and um, as a result, growing up, she developed multiple personalities, one of which is clearly resentful and spiteful and perhaps even violent. Um having on at least one occasion attempted to end her own life slash the life of Eve, it seems. Uh, or we could still truly be dealing with twins, although that doesn't seem likely with what we have seen here so far with the story with the midwife and everything, unless there's some really crazy um, circumstances going on here that we, we don't have any firm, firm grasp on just yet, but... Um, Simon, it seems, gets involved with Eve, possibly unaware of her disorder. Um, they frequent the rock, the Rockingham Arms, nearby, and uh, Simon, it seems, takes a liking to Helen, or, in the esteem of Eve, um, becomes suspicious of Helen, possibly due to this being some kind of a trigger, particularly with her hair, one way or another, whether true or not. Uh, begins to suspect Simon of having an affair. They have an argument on Friday the 17th. They both leave. Um, or um, Hannah manifests and decides to handle Simon once and for all. And so on Friday the 17th... Uh, no, because he was seen. He was seen at the rock. So Simon uh, leaves uh, to go to the rock. Um, happens to be having a conversation with Helen. 
Eve, or Hannah at this time, meanwhile, takes the car and follows him, probably watching him from afar, waiting for him to leave, and at some point takes an opportunity to end his life and dumps the body somewhere. We don't quite know that information yet. Those are the gaps that we have to fill in, but that seems to be the narrative so far. And if you want to see if I am right or if I am wrong or how this plays out, please leave a comment and perhaps I'll play again. Uh, but uh, I have other things I have to move on to today. So you take care. Um, I can see her story, why it comes so highly recommended. I think that as an open source intelligence or investigation game, I'm not getting a lot of that. Um, but I do like this game potentially as a learning tool because being able to reconstruct a narrative given bits and pieces of information uh, is an important skill to develop for investigators. So I actually really do like this. I wouldn't go so far as to saying that it's educational, but I would go so far as to say that this is a good... <sighs> okay, I won't go so far either as to say that it's a good investigation game because it's not really what it is. But this is a good narrative game, which is what it's billing itself as, and it is a good narrative game for timeline reconstruction and narrative reconstruction which i have probably never played a game that was actually good at doing those things so i'm actually really excited about it and that's why if people want to see more leave me a comment and i will happily continue playing this game but for now i must be done so take care and we'll see you next time